All right, guys, we're back for a, another week, round four's review for Supercoach 2024. Um, there was no update last week. I was completely sick, couldn't really put together five words without coughing. Um, yeah, so if you follow on Twitter and stuff, which you can find in the description, these were the trades from last week. Uh, I did post them up there, gave a bit of my reasoning as to like why I did these as well. But, you know, to keep it short and sweet, um, Wines... Uh, had the hamstring injury, so I had to trade him out. I like Tuke as the best option at the price, especially because I was getting around about 70k back uh, on the Sexton to Darcy. Um, this ended up being a huge misplay. Something that is, I was thinking about it last night, it's probably ruined my season completely, uh, how bad of a misplay this was. Um, so much so it actually, like, ruins my motivation because it's absolutely screwed my season over how bad of a misplay that was. Um, but yeah, so this week, really good score, 20, 2374, uh, up to the top 2000 in rank. Like I said, huge misplay. Last time I'm going to be up this high in rank. Uh, yeah, so, but a great score this week. Team value is also incredibly high. Looking at some of the high-ranking teams, I'm beating a lot of them in team value. Uh, but like I said, probably the last week I'm up this high because of how bad the trades were last week. Um, but yeah, we'll go into it uh, real quick. The defense, I, I should not have, I should have traded out Dacos. Um, that second week or i mean round one but you, you know it was like the second week of footy being on i definitely should trade a dacos right um he's lost 80k and i mean what's his break even now it's 10 110 he's not even averaging 110 i mean yeah i mean you couldn't trade him out after 135 maybe here i should have just traded him out that's a shame whatever um She's all 124. He looks good. He looks like he's guaranteed top six, probably a top three defender. Um, between him, Luke Ryan, there's about five people vying for like top three defender, but you know, it is what it is. It's like she's all Ryan Stewart. I think Houston could sneak, be a sneaky in there. He's so good to watch. and He's so fun. Um, I think Nick Martin, you know, I hate to say it because I traded him out, but he's probably in there as well uh, just because of the way he's playing. But, again, I don't see Nick Martin's role holding up. So, you know, if you haven't got him, I think you could probably skip on trading him in. Cheese was great. Um, that role's never going to change. It's always going to be somewhere between a 110 and a 130 score. I think his absolute bottom is like a 90, and that's just if he's super inefficient with it. Dan Houston, like I've said, uh, this guy's the most beautiful kick of the ball in the league. If he's not the best kick in the league, he's got the most beautiful kick in the league. And that sounds crazy to say. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, I just really like watching him. And, you know, you see how he diagnosed the field. His kick-ins, I feel like, were up this week. Yeah, they were. Uh, I, this is probably just a bit of Burton being out of position for him. That's what it did look like a bit. There was a stretch of about three straight behinds kicked. Like it was Houston kick out, kicks to a pack, uh, ball comes to ground, uh, Essendon pick it up, kick it behind, another Houston kick in. In the span of like, say, three minutes, I reckon he had like three kick ins. Uh, so yeah, that that is probably a bit higher than normal. But yeah, Houston's fun to watch. I like owning him. Not someone that, like, you know, trade the world to bring him in. Although, at 580k, how m what's his break even? 120. Probably got one more week of dropping. And it drops to 111. That's definitely hittable. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not a terrible pickup. These games aren't the worst. Saints in Adelaide. Crows in Adelaide. That's a showdown game. Everyone kind of plays up for that game. Uh, GMHBA is not great for defenders unless you're Tom Stewart. Uh, yeah, I mean, not the worst pickup, but there's probably better. Um, 
you know, if you're looking at defensive upgrade. Dacos, uh, spoke about it, should have traded him out. Uh, thought this would be worse with the Finn McGuinness tag, but, you know, he's a proud player after a couple of weeks of really just doing nothing on the field. Uh, he came out, had a good game. You do expect that from someone whose last name is Dacos. Uh, Wanganin Malera, uh, he's so good, but he's still so young, right? Like, there's a lot of errors he makes. And they're just, like, small errors, but it's what makes a 114, not a, a 134 or something like that, right? Like, I'd say there's about 15 points of errors in... Uh, I'm thinking, like, what is his nickname? It's, like, NWM, but you can't just say that, so... Okay, Wanganin Malera. There's about 15 points of errors, right? Um, not the worst, right? Like, there's definitely other players that... Zach Williams and... Dan, Dan Brozzi got stuck on the bench for most of the time. That was his problem. But, you know, you have a lot of inefficient guys. He's right there, Wanganin Malera. It's just... That, you know, maybe next year he's going to be a guaranteed top six, fine for, say, top four defender. Um... But yeah, he's still incredibly fun to watch. Probably him and Steele are really the only reason I watched Saints games. Apart from that, that team is... Oof, that team's hard to watch. Um, D'Ambrosio, like I said, got stuck on the bench. I think he had 20 minutes on the bench in the second half, or maybe it was just the fourth. There was some talk about him being hurt. I'm hoping that was just yeah, a small thing. Put him through training this week, put him on light duties, and then he's fine. But if he does get rested, it might change how I do my trades. Um, I have got an idea in mind, which I'm probably going to stick with because of how versatile it is. But yeah, we'll, we'll see once we get there. Zach Williams, I didn't watch the game, honestly. I'm not going to even comment on it. I, I turned on for like 10 minutes and it, I wasn't entertained. And then I found out like the ending... Um, yeah, Frio gets robbed and everything like that, but it doesn't matter, right? Frio, I still think, are the worst 3-0 team I've seen in a minute. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Howes was not good. Hoare is injured, but the reason why I haven't traded him out and I'm not racing to trade him out this week is he can't lose price if he's injured. Uh, he can't lose any cash, right? It's the reason why a lot of people are keeping Zachary on the bench and... Uh, I wouldn't keep Gibkiss. Gibkiss, because he's elevated price, I would trade him on. But you know, someone like Reed, who's 123k, you're not going to lose anything. He can only go up once he comes back. And he will just slide right back into the side, probably soon as well. Um, I don't think it was too serious, his injury. But yeah, uh, that's why Hawes not like have to trade him out now. As for why the ease on him, I couldn't be bothered changing it because I knew neither of these scores were going to matter. Uh, everyone here played. It doesn't matter. Midfield. The midfield was really good this week, apart from, of course, the one trade-in. So, Bontempelli, 140. This is why I paid up for him. It's just, it's so annoying when he scores 140, you don't have him. And now it's like, oh, great. Now I have to find 700k to go up to him, right? Like, if I didn't have him, I mean, if I didn't have him, who would I have? Uh, probably Sarong. Uh, I had a couple of starting teams with Sarong in it. I would have had to trade like a steal out or I mean, one of these guys to get to him. That yeah, that would kill your season, right? I would have to trade out a defender. I'd probably have to go Dacos out and to like fund getting to Bontempelli. And that's just a season ender, right? Um yeah, having him paid 700k for him, I definitely see the reasoning behind not starting him. It was 720k. It's a lot of money for one player, but it, that that one player is Marcus Bontempelli. He's probably I, I'd say Dacos is the best player in football, but Bont is like getting robbed for Brownlow every year. Um, but yeah, Butters 119, pretty good game from him considering last week was a bit disappointing um again i didn't get to go over it, but just didn't really get around it much against melbourne melbourne's mids were kind of like on fire that game guys like petrarca and everything it's this top eight mids are going to be 
it's going to be another what was it 2021 or 2020 one of those two years where like everyone was like 110 plus or like 115 plus i feel like it's going to be that again this year uh, which again is making me see that two camilla trade and go that's possibly a season ender error for me doing that trade just because of how much it messes up this week and next week but yeah um but is absolutely gun of a player um if there was a port adelaide player that i ever bought a, a guernsey of it would be zach butters i love watching him even though like you know it is heart in your mouth type of stuff but if you own him in super coach or in fantasy because man it, it looks like he's gonna have a concussion every play but he's fun i love it Rao, uh he started off like on fire right it was on like 70 at quarter time or like halfway into the second it was insane did come down a bit i think part of it was you know it was a hot day um the ground they were playing at mount barker i believe does this say this doesn't say does it i believe their game was the mount barker one uh a bit of a smaller no that's the the big ground it was the mcg ground um which is norwood um surprise surprise dimmer who coached richmond into being basically unbeatable at the mcg uh their team works when the surface is basically the mcg uh yeah so rail was great 130 absolutely take it he's on fire to start the season not someone to trade in right now his price is elevated i wouldn't be paying 620 for him the only reason i did trade him in and remember, I traded him in uh, right after the Adelaide game. Yeah, because then I was like, I'll get one game, and then I'll sit through the bye. It's because he's one of my favorite players, right? I, I won't, um, you know, go against that. He's one of my favorite players to watch. You know, the, the first couple of games he played of his career before he got injured were uh, some of the best games I've ever seen from a, a young player ever, um, and that's including guys like Nick Dacos. Um, next Jack Steele, what a start, right? Like, oh my God, considering I was not sold on this pick to start the year, I was like, ah, he'll probably make me cash and then I can just flip him off, you know, round about now, honestly, and get like a, an off buy type of premium, but he's just insane at the moment, right? Um, I want to see how long this stretch of form runs. Uh, I don't think it's going to be all year. I think this is going to be, you know, he would have been top eight if he stayed healthy uh, type of pick. But for now, I mean, this is one of the best starting picks ever, right? Like 126 average, started him at 520k. This is the definition of undervalued or value premium, right? In the midfield. Won't see many better picks than this. Ever. <laughs> I mean, right? Like, uh, maybe the only one that comes close is Will Brody in that one year. Um, but yeah, there's so much value in that pick. If you, again, if you don't have him, I wouldn't be trading him in. He's basically at 600K. Um, actually, I mean, 125 average at 600, under 600K. Maybe it is a trade in, honestly. Like, GWS isn't a bad game. We saw like a lot of Gold Coast guys scored pretty fine. Like Rao had a good score. Mac Andrew, I mean, he was just for some reason like the greatest interceptor of all time. Uh, Flanders played good. Maybe GWS isn't the worst matchup. Uh, Dogs, I think, give up some big scores, but their amount of players that score over 100 take a lot of the score. Port's not amazing. North is great. Hawthorne in Tassie. Uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad. Frio is good. Melbourne at the MCG isn't terrible. And then, obviously, West Coast at Optus. When's his buy? He's got the 15. You could trade in Steel this week. I would I don't know if I'd recommend it, but you could. Right? Say you have no other issues. You just want to get on the hot form player right now. You could. Luke Miller, um, I thought he played great, right? Like, you go every metric, right? Where are we? Gold Coast. There we go. Um, was down a little bit this week, but he had his 25 
odd touches, close to 30. This shows game logs. Uh, where are we? Touches. Yeah, what's that? That's uh, 24 touches. Oh, I thought he was good, right? Like, I thought he was good. Um, but should have picked Noah Flanders. And, <laughs> man, it was a 50-50 call. The only reason I didn't do Flanders is because I thought if I took, took, if I took, if I traded in, took Miller, took Miller, um, I'd have most of the mids that I want at the end of the year. So Bont is a keeper, Butters is a keeper, Rao's a keeper for me, uh, if he keeps up his form and doesn't get hurt. Right now, you have to be looking at Steele as a keeper. Um, he's almost at a 130 average. He just scored 140. You have to look at him as a keeper. I was like, all right, well, then I'm going to have five keepers in the midfield by round four. That's that's really, really good prog progress in completing the team. Um, versus, you know, in the forward line, I'd have Heaney, definitely a keeper. Powell, who I'm thinking is going to be a keeper because of how bad the forward line is this year. And... Um, Maybe one of these rookies will be keeper, like rookie price of so five as well. Obviously not a rookie, but rookie price. It was 200 and something K. Um, one of these guys will probably stay in the team for a minute. Um, yeah, I, I didn't mind the trade, but and I would like the Gold Coast game plan. I think it's something that they will be fighting for top eight this year. Whether they make it or not, I'm not too sure. I predict that they will. If not this year, they 100% will next year. Like, you cannot watch, especially this, this week's game against GWS, you cannot watch that game and go, uh, this team is going to be a grand final premiers threat in years to come, right? Like, everything about that team looks good. It's just a lot of their guys are young, extremely young, especially their forward line, and it's just not there yet. If they had one, like, huge forward, and I think Jed Walter could do it one day, that gets close to 50, 60 goals, man, they, they will be the best team in football. And they're so fun to watch as well. Uh, on the rookies for the midfield, Roberts was good. He's got a halfback role for the Swans, who play off halfback the entire game. That's their whole game plan. Um, McKercha is a bit weird, right? So Lazaro took a lot of his touches and just game influence this year, this week. Um, but they did also get smashed huge by Brisbane, right? Um, given another week, I could see this being the first of the big dominoes to fall. Just because I, I thought it was going to be Harley, honestly. I was even thinking about maybe Harley is a trade-out this week. Um, but 91 resets the cash gen. He has a Really good break even now of 12. Um, he's got Richmond this week who give up scores to midfielders. There will be a rest coming. Um, if you listen to like Simo and everyone talk about Reed, it's like, oh yeah, we will be resting him at some point this year. That's going to come, but hopefully it's still, <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks off at least. I would probably see him getting rested. When's West Coast by? I think theirs is 14. All right. Is that right? Yeah, 14. Uh, I mean, that's really like right in the middle. I'd say anywhere 8, 9, 10, he could get rested, come back for a couple of games, take the bye. Or maybe if they go like rest him in 13, he gets two weeks off and then he finishes out the season. Maybe. Um, but yeah. McKercher might be the first of these big... He's already at 300k, right? Like, that's not even a bad trade-out at that point. He's made all of his money. Riley Sanders was good. Had him on field this week. It wasn't a, a 90 that I missed out on last week. Oh, no, that was... Jeez, that was two weeks ago. Never mind. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Sanders is good. It's just the beverage effect, right? I don't think beverage is a good coach anymore. Um, so many mistakes that he makes and it's why they lose these close games when you lose a close game like this it's not so much personnel it's coaching and uh just something simple like instead of subbing in 30 something year old mccray to end the game start him and then sub him out for a young guy who's faster has the energy to just 
outrun a very old Geelong team. You know, like that's pretty simple coaching. Doesn't do it. Uh, and that's why they lost. But anyway, um, Sanders good, sharp. There was no way I could get this on field. And if we look at it, no one, I mean, it's showing this week, isn't it? Last week, um, this was the opposite way around. No one had him on field. It is what it is. The like top scoring teams that scored like 2,400, they were the ones that had him on field. But then you look at their teams and they're not amazing. Um, but yes, so great score. He's got a negative 51 break even. That's an easy 300k he hits now. Um, the best rookie of the bunch because he's just kept a consistent score. Like I said, you only need 70 from a rookie. If they score you 70 every week, they're the best rookie that's ever existed. Um, but yeah, so he's gone absolutely fine. Carol, someone that could either get dropped this week or have a role change because Walsh is supposedly coming back. Wait for the team sheets if you're even looking at trading him. I wouldn't yet. His break-even is only one. As long as he plays, he beats it, basically. Even if he's a sub, like, the sub will get to five, right? Um, as long as he plays. Uh, but then next week, Carroll could be a trade-out. If he, if his role has changed because Hollands is out, but Hollands is more outside, uh, they could play Carroll outside. Even though I, I do think he's more of a inside mid and you play Walsh outside, but last year, I mean, this is going on too long, but last year when they played Walsh outside is when Carlton were terrible and their fans were doing the whole take the jumper off. Um, so I don't see them doing that again, but we'll see. One to look at for next week. Um, Darcy Wilson, this was, I mean, I was so close to trading him out. Um, just because I don't like his game. I think it is so dependent on him having a goal or two. Uh, it's just 24 this week. He'll probably, he'll hit it, but probably only score like a 40, right? And it's not really going to save the cash gen much. Um, next week, this is probably out. Um, I'm just not a big fan of him. On to the rucks. I mean, Gorn is good. Yeah, is gone is good, and then Grundy does his job. So there's a the big thing for this week is do you trade Grundy? Is number three most traded? Eight thousand teams trading him out, which is nine point five percent of all trades being made. Um, who are people bringing him in for? None of these guys are Ruckman. Interesting. Can I see that? I'd imagine it's English or Marshall. Yeah. Um, so that's like the big thing this week. Do you trade Grundy? Because he's on buy. The plan was when we like made the team, hold him for you know four weeks, trade him at his buy, bring in a down in price Marshall, down in price English, uh, or, or like whoever's hot as a Ruckman at the moment. Um, we'll get to it in trades. I might be going a different way. On to the forwards, Heaney, top score of the round. Um, it was against West Coast. West Coast looked good that game, all right? I'm not going to hear, oh, you, you got beat by almost, you know, basically 30. Um, I'm not going to be hearing that. For three quarters, we made the game competitive. A rebuilding team that lost by a hundred, that got embarrassed by Sydney last year. To have three competitive quarters, that is basically a win for us, right? Like, uh, I'll take that. And Harley Reid looked insane that game. Um, but yeah, Heaney was always a lock for a 140 score. So I was pretty happy with... Uh, honestly, I could have just gone captain on him. I just didn't like the early options. I don't have anyone from this game. Um, don't have really... I mean, I could have done Sheasel, but I didn't really want to. Um, because I did think this was going to be a blowout, but I didn't think <laughs> Brisbane were going to be so inaccurate. Which, saying that now, sounds... Ridiculous. I wasn't going to captain Dan Houston, even though I like watching him. So then it came to, yeah, the equals game. But yeah, I mean, this was always a, going to be a big score. If you haven't got Heaney, you have to trade heaven and earth to get him. I know I said with these guys, they're kind of like at their price. I wouldn't really pay up for him. Heaney is the number one player in the game at the moment. Number one in season rank is the number one forward. 
if he was in the midfield, he'd be the number one midfielder. If he was in the rucks, he'd be the number one ruck. If he was in defense, he'd be the number one defender. He's the number one player in the game. You have to have him in your team. Um, it's the definition of like move heaven and earth to get him in your team. Whether he keeps up this form, he won't, but you do have to have him right now. It's like Neil. Uh, a couple of years ago, Neil was on like a 130 plus average and you just had to bring him in. Everyone knew like he's not going to keep this form up. He was he had like four back-to-back 120 or 130 games. He's not going to keep that up, but you had to bring him in anyway because to, that form is insane. You have to bring him in. Um, and lo and behold, he did drop off in form, which Heaney will do, <laughs> but you have to bring him in. Uh, Tom Powell, 73, a bit low, but, I mean, again, they got smashed. I'm not going to hold that against him. I think he's going to be top six because of how bad the forwards are this week, uh, this year. We're just having a look at them, right? Like, uh, forwards, and then, I mean, uh, that's not going to work. Go total points. Heaney, Jackson, Flanders, uh, far, like, you got top three, and then you got everyone else. And then it's, all right, Shea Bolton is good if he's in the midfield and kind of like rotates forward. Other than that, I wouldn't really touch him if he's a forward, uh, like an actual like in-game forward. Mackay, I'm not bringing in a key forward. Neil Bullen, don't trust it. Hogan, key forward. Papley, key forward. Not key forward, but, you know, key to the team forward. Uh, Zorko, don't trust the body. And then we're down to Powell. So I think he's going to be fine. It's, that's crazy that Jordan, uh, Jordan has the extra game. That's why. Um, so I think Powell is actually going to be a top six forward, <laughs> which is crazy. Uh, even at like a 95 average, I think he'd be a top six. Uh, on to Jordan, though. Uh, I held him because it was the West Coast game. Didn't want to use a boost or anything to trade him out. Wrong decision. <laughs> Wrong decision. Should have traded him out. Would have got me Flanders. Um, and I'd be laughing to the bank, right? But didn't do it. So he's got to go out this week. Uh, I'll do that in a minute though. Fife was like, this was almost old Fife. Um, didn't watch much of the game, but looking at highlights and everything like that, Fife was insane. So, yep. Good pick. Good starting pick. He will probably get injured soon. I don't see him lasting the whole season. Ollie Dempsey, uh, one of my favorite rookies of this year to watch. Uh, he's, God damn, Geelong found another one. Damn it, I hate that, right? Like, the only team I really dislike in football is Geelong. And God damn it, they're always good. It annoys the shit out of me. Um, they found another good player. Damn it. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's he's good, right? Like, he almost took mark of the year. Um, yeah, he's fun, right? Like, damn, they found another good one. Sam Darcy, on the other hand, uh, looks very good for the dogs, but there is the beverage effect. Um, he was their leading goal kicker all game, and guess who had, like, the lowest time on ground for most of the game that wasn't subbed? Sam Darcy, like, it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, either he's got the worst tank that he doesn't belong in the AFL or you're just not a good coach. <laughs> like, it's one or the other. If you're going to play all these tall forwards, play the tall forwards. Uh, I think having a team of Norton and Darcy and Lob, uh, I don't think Lob was playing this week, but, like, all these tall forwards... I, I think it's bad coaching. I think it's terrible coaching, actually. Um, but Darcy is a very good player, right? I'm not going to take it away from him. He is a very good player. He just knows how to get around it. And even when it comes to bringing the ball to the ground, he's not your typical Frankenstein-ish big man that he doesn't know what to do once the ball's on the ground. He's really good, right? Like uh, someone that there was a lot of hype going around him because of the last name and the family, but he's actually a good player. Um, and if he can continues to develop as like a backup rock, kind of like, uh, I mean, the, the first one that comes to mind is Tom Hawkins, uh, being like the backup rock 
slash forward 50 rock. Um, if he continues to develop in that, he's going to have a long, long, long career. There's a lot of other guys that do that, right? Like Ben Brown kind of does that. Um, yeah, there's guys around the league. Um, On to the bench. Cadman wasn't amazing, but he's got... Don't they have Eston or something this week? Up oh, St. Kilda. That's not great. I think the Saints defense is pretty good. Uh, and this is going to be one of them. Mm. If Cadman kicks straight, it's not good for uh, Rangani Malera. But if he does kick inaccurate, it's not good for him. And I think I have to field him this week. We'll see. Uh, actually, no, I won't have to field him. Never mind. So it's all good. Um, on to trades, because we're already half an hour in, which I didn't expect to talk this much. But for trades, it's Jordan has to go. Uh, move Wilson up, move Dacos down. And then... So, again, West Coast fan. Um... I'm going to be trading in Yo, but I'm also trading in Closey. So it's Closey and Howes. Because Howes' break-even is really high. 56. I don't think he's hitting 56. He's had two really bad weeks. And who did Melbourne play this week? Does this tell me? Brisbane. Yeah. Uh, look, against the Danaher, he's going to get... He's going to get... Uh, is he'll be destroyed, right? So I'm going with them two out for Yo. So the idea with Yo and why I'm actually quite a fan of this trade, honestly, um, just because of how versatile this trade is. So best case scenario, Yo's my worst case scenario. Yo's my D6, my M8, one of those two, right? Best case scenario, he's my D7, M9. He's he's a good player. Uh, will he get hurt? Probably, but he looks really good right now, right? Like, um, and also doing this, I get to have the best score on field. So I get to see Closey play um, here. And if I like his score, I can bring him on. I did this in my head. How did I do it? It was Yo goes to Dacos. And then Yo comes on for one of these three. No, Yo would come on for Roberts. And... Hmm. Oh, okay. So essentially, if I think closest score is going to be better than a Sharp or a Carroll, I get to bring him on for best 18. Uh, moving Yo into the midfield, or I can just leave it like that. I get six here, I get all the guys here, and Sharp and Carroll and everything. I think Closey's really good, by the way. Really good. Um, and then next week, trades are one of these guys, McKercher, Carroll, Wilson, Cadman, one of them out to... The Gold Coast midfielder. I'm, I'm really getting very Gold Coast heavy, and I'm not a fan of it, but they've got a lot of good players at the moment. So go there, go less than three, and bring this all the way down. Will Graham. So Will Graham actually got a lot of CBAs this week. So if I go back, go to Gold Coast. Uh, it was at 49. So Sam Flanders is playing off halfback now. Dropped to absolute zero CBAs. Um, the only time that happens is if it's like a foot down roll change, um, to go from fifties down to 39, which is just a bit of, you know, I was off the ground when there were CBAs, uh, from 50 to zero. He's just not a midfielder. He's a halfback now. Um, he's someone that I'll be targeting. And I think, I think round seven or something, I can bring him in. Uh, we'll see. There's also Nick Martin I want to target as well, uh, depending on if Essen can start to win a couple of games. But yeah, that's the team for this week. Um, let me know what trades you guys are doing and how you guys went. Uh, again, sorry about last week. It was just I had 
tonsillitis and stuff, couldn't talk, right? Um, throat was killing me just to, like, cough, right? So it is what it is. Um, first week in two years or three years that I missed, um, it is what it is. See you all next week. Um, probably another video coming out this week. I've got some cards to open. But yeah, see you all next week. Let me know what you guys are doing. Cheers. Tasty out.